The tragedy, of course, is that the tax credit U-turn is largely a fabrication. These cuts will be taking place anyway, at a slightly later date when all of tax credit expenditure is rolled into a new benefit, universal credit. And some 140,000 households are already in receipt of universal credit through transitional arrangements, so we'll fill this cut now in full. George Osborne was able to be appear to being generous on the welfare bill because of this windfall from the OBR in the form of higher tax revenues. Well, this windfall arose from changes in the way that the OBR computes its forecasts rather than any genuine upturn in the UK economy, which might have led to a higher tax take. And these savings were applied not to welfare, but to the departmental budgets. So some of the cuts that were going to pl take place to government departments will now be slowed down or even reversed altogether. This will do George Osborne's leadership ambitions no harm, of course, because it avoids him having to have a public fight with some of his cabinet colleagues. There are, therefore, in light of these changes to the forecasts, questions about the OBR's independence. I think these concerns, to some extent, miss the point. The problem with the OBR is far more profound. We should be worried about its ideological bias, not necessarily its political independence or otherwise. The kind of assumptions that the OBR makes about what the UK economy look like, looks like are quite simply faulty. So its forecasts are quite frequently over-optimistic. And I think, in due course, the uh, higher tax revenues that it forecast yesterday will be revised down. But of course, by then, the damage may well be done. The OBR is not really in a position to judge the long-term consequences for Britain's economic development of, for instance, a severely shrunken state a highly unequal social order, or the destruction of productive capacity through chronic underinvestment. But simply by existing with this veneer of independence, the OBR creates the impression that UK economic policy is being effectively supervised. This simply isn't the case.